Tamo junto. This episode of the Off-Road Podcast is sponsored by Colby Valve. Off-Road Podcast, episode 452, Spartan Rope. Tonight, Aaron finds the volume knob, Koi bites off more than he should chew, and Ben begins rebuilding his pile of parts. Welcome to the Off-Road Podcast, a podcast about everything off-road. We cover the news, review products, and interview people in the off-road industry. Your hosts tonight are Aaron, Koi, and my name is Ben. And tonight we are joined by Nai Sei Chin from Spartan Ropes. And welcome to the show. And I said Spartan Ropes. When it's Spartan Rope, I'm terrible. <laughs> it's all good. You're not the only one, Ben. <laughs> it just feels like it should be plural. I don't know why. Because you always have more than one, right? I try to. Unless you're that guy. <laughs> okay, Koi. Like I said right before we went live, I'm dying to know. You says you bit off more than you should chew. <laughs> what well, are you doing? What's going on I, in your life I, right I, now? Well, I went to the circus with my family. That's pretty cool. I thought circuses were lame now. But they're actually, this one was not too They had elephants. Hmm. It was uh, people riding on bison. Camels. The dudes in the you know the big metal ball and the motorcycles driving upside down in circles had that all the stuff dancing ladies, people flying through the air on ropes. The elephants were sad looking though, dude. I kind of felt sorry. Oh for yeah, them. yeah. Pretty, I do too. They're rough, rough. But my kids got to ride on them, so that was cool. Uh, no, my dumb decision, possibly more than I can chew. I. Yeah, you know, I was uh, probably if you listen to the podcast, no, I I used to do some autocross, quite a bit of it actually, and I have a MR2 Spider hanging out in my garage somewhere, and I keep saying I'm gonna I'm gonna start autocrossing again, and uh, the years just tick by, and finally I just signed up for a track cross the other day, which <clears throat> kind of like an auto, it's like a you lap the racetrack, but it has like slaloms and stuff to keep you slowed down on the straight stretches, and I was like, you know what, I'm doing it, and I just signed up for it. And then I was talking to a buddy about it, and he was asking me all these questions about rules and stuff. I was like, well, man, I haven't done this in like 10 years. Uh, I, you know, that's what it was when I quit doing it. And then I was like, man, maybe I should have signed up for something lower level, like in a parking lot before. <laughs> I just went straight <laughs> to the hot laughing tracks on a car I haven't raced ever. Bunch of modifications that I haven't tested out at all. Got like four other things I got to do to it before I get there. And so, uh, you know, I'm sure it's a perishable skill. I'm sure I've lost a ton of skill. Never raced this car before. And I'm going to make a bunch of modifications right before I race it, which is like cardinal rule of what you're not supposed to do. So it's uh, last weekend of this month, Aaron. So I was thinking of the Friday night before I go. <clears throat> last weekend of March or April? Sorry, April, la last weekend of March. Wait, Th that's oh, last weekend of April. Sorry, last weekend. Okay. Of April. I'm a month away, essentially. Okay. All right. But I like to save all the work for the night before the race. So if you want to show yeah, yeah. up that Friday night so that we can like put on sway bars and, you know, really do a bunch of important stuff and then eyeball an alignment and then I can just load it on the trailer and go. Yeah, let's do it. Let's so do that's, it. uh, that's why I probably bit off more in my chew because after I paid all the money for this, I was like, this might not have been the smartest thing that I could have done, but all right. All right. The well, the good news, the good news is all you got to do is, just start tracking that car on the the highway, the freeway, the clover leaf on and off ramps. You you can dial it in pretty good. Just get her get her out there. Plan to. I need to put insurance back on it before I start doing that. Oh, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's a good idea. I mean, I, just, I don't have to, but I feel like it'd be a good idea. Oh, and then uh, then I got the royal treatment from Aaron this weekend. Showed oh, up to shucks. his daughter's birthday party. He had an ice cold. Tall boy, Dr. Pepper waiting for me, which I was like, oh, be still my heart. And then he's like, hey, that's not all. He pulls out a Fritos cheese dip can. And I just, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> the plot moistened. 
I really know how to treat a guy. Ben, he you does. come down. Come down, Ben. I'll get you your favorite treats, too. You leave Washington? Oh, no. How could I ever do that? <laughs> I, are you out of Washington, Ben? Yeah, I'm just uh, east of T Tacoma. Oh, okay. I'm in East Vancouver, so maybe an hour and a half away. Yeah, you're not too far away from Phil, right? Yeah, really close, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you are right. <laughs> I'm sorry for myself as well. <laughs> uh, we like Phil. <laughs> Has he been on the show yet? Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think he's actually been on the show yet. He's been to events and stuff, and we've talked about him, but I'm in some group there. chats with him. Okay. We make fun yeah, he, of people together sometimes. He calls me from time to time. Nice. Nice. Aaron, Aaron, what about you? I see exhaust work in your uh, your explanation. I need to know. Oh, I should that. I should have uploaded that photo. I'm going to do a a very poor man photo upload here right now. Um, I've got uh, one of my friends is actually working on the truck. Boy, that's going to be a terrible photo, but he just sent me a text like a half hour ago. He's welding the muffler on for me as we speak, putting a, a nice uh, turn down tip on it. So it stops and falling off. There we, there we go. Yeah. So it stops falling off. He's got some exhaust hangers showing up in the morning. So I'm excited. Uh, no more bailing wire. We're proud of you, Aaron. Yeah. You can actually see the bailing wire in that one photo. Yeah. You um, I uh, dropped it off at his house last night and he drove it into work this morning, which is only like four blocks away for him. But um, his wife was apparently outside on the sidewalk when he fired my truck up. And he said he scared the crap out of his wife. <laughs> it made me so happy. That truck is so loud when it's just open headers. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's getting done. Um, and then uh, I can start doing some more stuff when I get that back. Um, and then I did some work out in the shop this weekend and actually after work today. Let's find that picture. There we go. So. Uh, I, th these two sections of wall, uh, if you don't remember, I put up three quarter inch birch plywood. It's a very finished, like cabinet grade of plywood, super nice plywood. I put a coating of polyurethane on them. And then I was able to get my lower cabinets slid into place. And then I, uh, screwed the uppers on and I, I have one that I didn't get screwed on in this photo, but I got that up there today. And then that one that isn't up there, that shorter section, the one on the left, I got that screwed to the wall, the lower cabinets. And um, I got the top for it cut to size. So that's inch and a half plywood going on the tops of them. And then I'll polyurethane that as well to make it uh, look nice. So uh, Eric says, what temperature is it on the thermometers? It was 51 degrees in there. So um, toasty. Uh, not too bad. I mean, that's a great working temperature when you're out moving around, shucking and jiving. Fifty-one is fifty-one's a good oh, temperature. Yeah. yeah, I, I, that's what I got it up to in here when I was working in here, and it was nice being able to not need a hoodie or anything. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so working on the shop, I'm super excited. I'm getting some good headway done on that. Um, like Koi mentioned, we had birthday party for my daughter on Saturday, and what that means is that. I'm done printing stuff for her birthday party for party favors. I printed all these um, dragons and dragon eggs for her to hand out. So now I'm printing fun stuff for our audio listeners. I'm holding up a magazine rack. It's holding up uh, a, a car and driver, uh, Peterson's off-road magazine, <laughs> and uh, a Motor Trend magazine. Uh, there are 30 round magazines. Um, I, I like to read magazines. So yeah. yeah, I got a cool magazine holder that I printed. This one is, uh, I'm going to hold up. This is for the smaller magazines. Um, so yeah. the Yeah. So I pr print some of that fun stuff. Having a good time AR doing that. The AR 10 tire deflator holder. <laughs> and day. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Aaron, I'm not saying those type of magazines too. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Montana Dirt Road says the 30 page magazines. Yes, that's it. The 30 page magazines. So, 
<laughs> uh, Leroy Engineering's in the comments. He said he's putting in some low range gears while he's watching. I'm curious what you're putting those in. Uh, Plow guy Dave says not. Don't forget to like the video. So yeah, all you guys watching, don't forget to like the video. Um, he helps. also says he he likes it cold as well when he's working. So uh, that's about it for me. How about you, Ben? What have you been up to? Well, um, so, you know, I, I did all that work and I got rid of like the skid plates. I, you know, I got stuff installed and I ran out of like stuff to install. So I, I decided to buy more stuff to install. Um, so I found some uh, coilovers for the Forerunner um, used. I got some Icon 2.5s um, for a pretty decent deal. Um, not sure I'll get them done before I take off for Montana for Easter but uh you're gonna have them re rebuilt before you install them or just send it um i don't know he didn't have them on for too long but he was searching rescue so i'm like maybe i should just send it or we, not send it and just rebuild them beforehand uh, we all know you're just gonna send it ben i'm probably just yeah. gonna send it honestly just bolt them up i'm probably just gonna send it and then uh i'm gonna keep the um ones i have on hand for when it's time to rebuild them, I'm going to clean Good them idea. up before I put them in. That don't way, what? What? Don't bother. They're going to get dirty. Put them on. But any <laughs> residue that's on there, dirt that's on there, that could cause a leak. You know, it it might last me a couple extra miles. You know, one or two is better than. Put them on. Spray them with a hose. And call it good. Oh, okay. Uh, send it, huh? Leroy Engineering sent me a picture of the low range gears he is installing, and I'm gonna do the uh, hold the phone up to the screen thing again. He's working on an RC car, so uh, I was I was wondering because he didn't say anything to me about buying gears for his Nissan. So oh, he was uh, just asking us about those RC cars, and he's already modifying the daylight. Like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that did not take long at all. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna give him the speech for like, hey, these RC cars are great, but when you start modifying them, stuff starts breaking. So I guess, yeah, you got to work on those more than you do real off road rigs. And then uh, Montana Dirt Roads uh, talked about talking some more. We I talked to him about my trip up in June, um, a little bit about some places to go. I'm kind of plotting out the path for what I'm gonna do. So. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of stoked for that. Other than that, it's just been uh, work and family stuff. So you know how that goes. No listener feedback this week, huh? Hold up, you didn't ask Nye what he's been up oh, to in no, the off-road world. Nye. What's been up man. in the off-road world with you, man? man. I'm terrible. Rude. Rude. <laughs> terribly rude. Rude. So I've been slowly uh, gathering parts to. Um... To build the, I have a GX 460, like a 2014. It's been stock for the longest time. So, um, so, so yeah, I've been still, 470. Yeah, 460. Yeah, that's that's I, so for the non Lexus guys. That's the like a Land Cruiser, right? Land Cruiser Prado. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of like in between, a little bit bigger. Right, right. I like 460s. So, so I got that last year and I've been slowly gathering parts to build it. Um, I've got, so I got King two and a half coilover suspension. Um, I've got total chaos, lower control arms. I just had a whole bunch of work done to it actually in Seattle. Um, so shout out to Tuan over at integrated metal works. he custom fabricated a rear swing out for me, did the cam chap gussets, nice. spindle gussets, um, a whole bunch of work, right? I got a roof rack on it. I got a stripper roof rack alpha rex headlights so it's pretty much all the things i don't need before i lift it and i'm gonna get so i've been had i've kind of had these parts sitting there but i got new um oem axles i've got a new uh koyo hub and bearing you know combo kit that i'm going to be throwing on so basically i want to refresh the whole suspension when i'm going to do it because in my experience at least the last few rigs that i've built as soon as you lift it ball joints go out axles start leaking you know how it is it's like upper control it's like it's you just got to do it all at once so i was like you know what i'm gonna be patient this time i'm gonna do it all at once um so yeah i've got parts i've been doing and i finally got my wheels back from omf performance so uh, they custom uh be locked a set of rays uh t37 xts for me so um 
I got the Mickey Thompson tires and I saw that you maybe asked me a tire question. So we'll definitely give you some feedback there. But I've been working on mounting uh, the wheels onto the tires. Um, and yeah, I've got three out of five done. So I'm just kind of doing it, you know, at, at night when I have time. I got a couple of kids. So I actually time myself early. And it takes me about 35 minutes to do each wheel uh, mounting onto the tire with the B-Locks, TPMS, and all that. Torque to spec. It's about 35 minutes for me. So. Are the tires you're putting on, are they new tires? The brand new tires, yeah. Uh. I know it's it's frustrating, but like I don't know what it is about new tires, man. You know how they always <laughs> talk about, uh, you know, there's all these TikTok videos about how often guys think about Rome. That's tire for me. It's tires. Like if you just hey, how many times a week do you think about new tires? I like 47. I, I don't know, maybe more. I I constantly I smell something. I'm like that smells like new tires. <laughs> well, everyone that knows me knows that I go through a set of new tires and new wheels and vehicles, like a set of underwear. So, <laughs> I mean, pretty often. Um, but I plan on keeping these for a while, and um, you know. So yeah, I mean, I've literally this week just been doing all that, prepping it. Um, I'm gonna get the lift on it on Friday, so. Um, looking forward to it it's been stocked for the longest time so so right so on. we see you got the ott tune uh what did you go with did you go spicy no um i'm gonna blame this on cole and hopefully he's watching but he had told me to go with like a like a medium and then if i didn't like it go higher and i was like yeah you're right you're probably that's probably a good idea uh i may hit him up and go go spicy i think so we'll see depends on how feels after have- I, I lift it <laughs> Do you not have the ECT button or whatever that button is? I don't have that on the GX460 that I know of. At least I don't okay. remember that button. Yeah. I had it on my third gen forerunner. He was so. talking about how you could run, he can load two tunes if you had a button or a, something to attach that tune oh, to. So. Yeah. I don't yeah, think I have that button on the GX. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Pete's Tundra has uh, the tow, tow haul button. And he has so regular, and then you push the button, and it's spicy. And he he gets in trouble with his wife for putting in spicy mode too much. I really hope someday Pete trades in his Tundra without letting anybody know about it. <laughs> Some random old guy buys that Tundra, is like tow hall mode. Holy crap! It's all burning out and stuff. You know, <laughs> that'd be amazing. It'd be fun just to go do it to a rig before it gets sold, and you know, see what happens night yeah i've got spicy and there's a part of me that's contemplating extra spicy <laughs> my see my buddy mark uh he, he's like you probably shouldn't do spicy or spicy because i haven't driven it actually off-road or actually wheeling yet because it's, it's stock right now I've, I've taken it hunting off-road but that's not really wheeling you know so um but he says that if you go too sensitive when you're off road it's it's going to be too sensitive right so i well, haven't you, you said you're going 35s yet. though right i'm going 35s yeah yeah drive it with 35s for a little bit and you'll probably probably decide to go a little spicier okay i'm on 33s on my forerunner and it's a v6 it's just like i want that extra oomph what do you have a third gen fourth gen or what do you have first gen fourth, what do you got uh fourth gen okay i had one of those too so. <laughs> this is so awesome <laughs> all right we won't tell anybody because no i'm problem. sure the rental car company won't watch this podcast but he says he may or may not have tuned a rental car before oh, oh my that's goodness awesome. that, i would do that to every rental car i ever owned and i would put it oh, up full spicy the max so spiciest <laughs> work shift, yeah. everything to the max that would be Oh, wow, I really like this. I want one of these. Why is then they go out and buy one? And it's like, man, this thing's sluggish. I like that other one I had for years when I was young. Luckily, they have that uh, you can't rent a car until you're like 23 or something. For years when we were younger, we wanted to rent like a Ford Focus and just right behind the filter run a dry nitrous kit into it, <laughs> buy the extra insurance and just, just smash nitrous into it, then return it, put tape over the hole, you know? Uh, but never could rent a car so we never got around to doing that but you only have to be 18 to rent a u-haul for all the <laughs> listeners listening i know a guy who did that 
All right, Ben, pick us back up where you left. All off. right. Yeah. Listener feedback. We got none. Um, so remember 605 spotter, but we had that feedback last week. Coy, you weren't here. So nope. you need to tell us a detail about your rig. Uh, One random detail. One well, random the driver detail. is uh, <laughs> better than he sounds, <laughs> but faster driver. than he looks. So that's one detail about my rig fatter than i sound faster than i look and you drive the fj cruiser correct trail teams 2010 fj cruiser yes uh and then i just want to mention real quick um we did an episode all about us it was episode 400 we're on episode 452 so exactly a year ago uh episode 400 was all about us so maybe sometime this summer we'll do another one we can try to go a little more in tune tell everybody uh if uh the cup holders match the carpet you know you know what i mean so uh bgt 595 says how much of a titan is aaron's frontier uh it is there's a lot of titan um most of the drivetrain front diff um the engine the frame the, no no not the frame uh it's and the then i've got frame, a full titan it is similar yep of uh, titan suspension i also have a titan fuel tank i'd like to put in but i've not gotten around to it yet so yeah i've got a lot of titan on my frontier so thanks for asking We also want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Patch. Head over to patriotpatch.co and check out their selection of great patches, shirts, cleaning mats, signs, and stickers. You can also join the Patch of the Month Club for 15 bucks and receive a patch, matching sticker, and artist proof each month. Aaron, have you seen uh, this week's, this month's, upcoming month's Patch of the Month? Mm-mm. Me neither. I'm curious. It's gonna. We know it's Easter themed, right? We're close. So, yeah, we're close. It'll that was be a Easter great, themed. great, great build up, Ben. Great build up. Yeah. I, I was well, expecting him to be like, but I have. It? Yeah. I don't know. Well, it's, it's it's his it's his boyfriend's. Well, his <laughs> other boyfriend. Yeah. Such a good pod. Yeah. But it's it's gonna be Easter themed. That's that's our lead up to that. So. Yes, it will be Easter themed. And then uh, let's not forget, we've got our patches, um, $13 shipped from us here, $13 for the first one, um, shipped in the continental United States, 10 for any additional, um, or $10 each picked up from us in person. Uh, shoot us a message through any of our channels and we can hook you up with that PayPal link. Have tire troubles ever left you deflated? Colby Valve has got you covered. Ever have a valve stem leak? Colby Valve makes reusable and easily replaceable valve stems that don't require you to remove your tire from the wheel. They work with your off-road rig, ATV, side-by-side, -side, commuter vehicle, or even your tractor. Never be left stranded again because of a busted valve stem. They also have a tire repair kit for those punctures that keep you away from doing your favorite thing, wheeling. Make sure to check out ColbyValve.com or ask for them at your local off-road product store. You're up, Coy. Oh, sorry. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? All right, guys. Uh, this article is brought by Motor One, the EJS concept vehicles. Uh, the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon high top concept. You won't find any restaurants from Jeep this year, but the <clears throat> Gladiator what? Rubicon. What? Restaurants? That's what you guys Rest typed in here. Yeah, that's what they have uh, on the article. <laughs> uh, they have the pizza. Oh, it's a resto there. mod. Oh my goodness! Oh, wow, that definitely got. That makes more sense now. I was I yeah. was wondering what I missed out on here. I assumed the Jeep had like a food truck there last year or something. I thought they had <laughs> a a pizza truck last year, but yeah, it's supposed to be resto mods. Uh, 
Anyways, you won't find any resto mods from Jeep this year, but the Gladiator Rubicon high top concept certainly pulls on our 1970s heartstrings. Wearing a metallic two tone ginger snap exterior finish has flat fender flat <laughs> yeah. flat fender flares and a modified front bumper from American Expedition Vehicles. This makes room for 40 inch all terrain tires turned by Dana 60 axles, and there's an adjustable air suspension system in there too. The 3.6 liter V6 and an eight speed automatic are stock. Inside the interior gets a leather makeover and all the bed features lockable storage compartments. All in all, it's a relatively minor build, but it could be the best looking concept of the bunch. Can you really call I, that a concept? Like it's just a build. I don't like the I don't yeah, it's a build, not a concept. Like I, could make I don't like that bumper myself. It's a letdown, is what it is. No, that said, I love the color choices they went there with that kind of burnt orange and dark brown. Yeah, it that reminds me of like a Comanche or a Scrambler being that color scheme back in the day. Yeah, yep. That bumper is just weird. I feel like it just it throws it off. I do like the light bar they've got underneath it. That's a a good spot for a light bar. That that yeah. bumper reminds me of like snowplow bumpers where the lights stick out <laughs> over the plow. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's got it's got something going on. I like those tires though. That's those are those new uh, uh, BFGs. We're gonna are talk about KO3s? those in the next news story. Yeah, those are the Ko threes. Okay. How they um, get their hands on those in a forty? Yeah. The uh, next one's the Jeep Lowdown concept. A lowrider at Moab doesn't make sense, but in this instance, lowdown doesn't mean a slam suspension. In fact, this Wrangler maintains its factory stock ride height with 42-inch mud terrain tires squeezed under there. Uh, Jeep says to help keep this cent- uh, help to help keep its center of gravity low, um, but the wheel tire combo needs um, special high tint, high clearance carbon fiber or carbon fender flares to make it work. Uh, and it's based on the Rubicon 392, which means it's a stock 6 foot, 6.4 Hemi V8 under the hood, making 470 horsepower. Uh, custom clear hood lets you see the Hemi beneath it, um, th- though onlooker, onlook, onlookers might be blindsided by its poison apple red paint job. The interior gets custom black leather seats, and it's shielded by a BC bespoke uh red bikini top oh it's probably supposed to be best top and to make sure and not forget what's under the hood that 392 uh the decals are prominent on the fenders and on the dash and the dash looks really weird in this one um because i didn't see a radio in there the 2002 import scene called and they want their hood back (laughs) i don't know i think i think that that looks kind of cool I, so I think it's pretty cool, uh, considering it's got the 392 under the hood. If um, any of you I ever get a clear hood like that, anytime you're not around, I'm going to reach up there and I'm going to I'm gonna carry a bottle of oil just so I can just flick some oil on that and then close the hood. <laughs> and watch you search for an oil leak for years. It's going to be amazing. Um, I think it is a bikini top. If you look at this picture, Ben, um, it's just just the top portion i think that's what the bikini top is right yeah but it said bespoke i i think it meant best top Be- oh no, you think it was a no bespoke, bespoke is a term for custom, bespoke is yeah. a term for custom oh, yeah it's yeah. like, like yeah. nice one off yeah i got you uh yeah. i i like the uh low cog build that's cool yeah i do too i've always been a fan of low center gravity builds and this one's on 42s and it said stock ride height on 42s yeah that's crazy that's impressive i don't there must not be a lot of up travel but that's still pretty wild (laughs) then you can try and like oh no i I barely did anything to it honey it's a stock ride height (laughs) yeah i didn't have to invest in the suspension at all just tires and fenders all right and then they have the jeep willis dispatch concept here where things get very green the willis dispatch dispatcher concept Uh showcases what's that we don't have any we don't have any pictures of that one it's going to be a green jeep like come on Uh, (laughs) (laughs) we've all seen it before 
uh, showcases where Jeep started, where it's go and where it's going. Combining retro cues such as embossed Willis lettering on the hood and steel wheels with modern Wrangler 4XE powertrain. The 16-inch wheels are shod with 36-inch tires that, frankly, look rather modest in this lineup. There's a simple front bumper with a big old winch in there, and inside the seats have no headrest to further push the retro theme. However, the leather seats are far from what you'd find in classic post-war Jeep. You also won't, you also wouldn't find the hybrid, hybrid power chain train, which remains stock at 375 horsepower and 470 foot pounds of torque. There are Dana 50 axles and 470 gears for low speed capacity capability. And there's no missing it in Moab. Thanks to the shade of element 115 green applied to the exterior. That's Tiffany blue, isn't it? <laughs> Look, quite, I'm, close. <laughs> I'm near it's, color line, but there's nothing green about that. Yeah, it, no, that's that's green. That kind of looks like the Tiffany Glocks you see, like aimed towards girls, or not Glocks, but uh, what is that? The uh, LCP nine. The, the Tiffany's a blue. This is green. I mean, this is that's that's supposed to be a throwback to military stuff. It looks more like the old school Forest Service color. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I I think that that one is ugly, and I especially hate, I especially hate the wheels and tires. Ugh. With some steelies. <laughs> too, it's too retro. I it's just way too retro. I'm not enjoying it. Honestly, when you're going one that's like your military or even Forest Service theme, whatever you're going with, to do the four XC. Well. Shouldn't that one have the him in it? Yeah. Yeah. The next is the Jeep Vacationeer um, concept. It's just uh, just as bright on its eyes as its Grand Wagoneer concept. Painted spearmint and fitted with a pop top tent for overlanding adventure. Just Jeep adds a touch of wood grain to the sides. An ode to the classic Wagoneer. And one that easily stands out with a, this pastel finish. Inside is a wash with plaid, at least the front seats, because the second and third rows are removed. This makes room for the sky top, sky loft top, which is permanently mounted and accessible from within the Wagoneer. Uh, the suspension and powertrain are stock, though uh, the 35-inch tires provide an extra inch and a half of ground clearance. Large wheel wells and custom fender flares make room for the tires and skid plates help protect the undercarriage i'm kind wow. of just disappointed with concepts i'm glad they've got that little aloe vera plant in a cup holder in there for all their burn they're getting yeah <laughs> you know how the hipsters start doing beards and like uh you know pl plaid shirts and stuff that's like the vibe I get from this. What what we Mon men call lumber sexual. Like it has very, <laughs> very lumber sexual. Montana Dirt Road says that screams I'm a city it. <laughs> city -it. I love when you combine two words with idiot. It's yeah. awesome. It always is a winner in my book. Yeah. <laughs> that picture smells like cigarettes. <laughs> clove cigarettes but yes <clears throat> oh man all right let's jump in the new uh the next news here, article here is from motor trend and it is titled can the new bfg all-terrain ta ko3 top the ko2 an off-road tire legend i don't know if it's an off-road tire legend but um it they definitely sold a lot of them <laughs> so bfg has reimagined its flagship all-terrain tire so say goodbye to the KO2 and hello to the new BFG TA KO3. Since the 1970s, BF Goodrich has offered an all-terrain tire tested in the torturous Baja 1000 off-road race. Previous tires in the lineup have included the radial all-terrain TA. TA stands for terrain assault. The radial all-terrain KO. The radial all terrain KO2, and now the radial all terrain KO3. I had no idea that radial uh, came before KO, or I should say before all terrain. So I had no idea that was part of the nomenclature. I've just always I known had it as the. No idea that is TA stood for terrain assault. I didn't know that either. 
I figured it was terrain attack. Uh, the KO3 comes nearly a decade after its predecessor and much appears to be the same, like its ruggedness and reliability. The three peak mountain snowflake service rating, the general theme of the tread pattern, but what changes have made the, what changes have been made to the legendary all-terrain rubber first, while previous iterations of the all-terrain tread pattern, Previous iterations of the all-terrain, the tread pattern has been revised. Tread blocks appear to be positioned closer, which they really do. I'm feeling like this is less all-terrain. Yeah, look at this picture right here. They look like they're 50% That's so, closer. That's a side by side. The one on the left is the 03, and the one on the right is the 02. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the lugs are closer together than they were in the KO2. Also, the KO2 featured triangular, I would call them more like a pyramid, stone ejectors, in which you can see one uh, almost smack dab in the center. Uh, the KO3 does not have those, um, but it does have the miniature lettering between alternating shoulder tread lugs, which whoop de doo who cares about lettering? Um, to address water evacuation from beneath the tire, the KO3 benefits from a larger water channel which extends farther across it. tread blocks also show, show more interlocking full depth sipes uh and the great the greater number of full depth sites can sipes can contribute to the tires handling in snowy conditions as well as its grip on rocks so that's good that's a good thing it definitely does have more siping uh the tire it says the tire has not been released to the public yet which i'm shocked to find that out because in this photo right here it's on a toyota tacoma um in this photo right here it's on a jeep at easter jeep safari um so somehow somebody's getting their hands on them marketing uh, teams and people are getting them some people are getting well yeah. tire rack selling them right now in a specific size i think it's, they sell a 285 70 um and the local discount tire Sell, sold like a 34 by 11 and a half, I think, if I remember correctly. Interesting. So, well, so, so certain, yeah, certain manufacturers or distributors are selling them for sure. Uh, the, it's going to be OE equipment on the 2024 Ford Ranger Raptor in a 285 7017, which is a 33 by 11. And I'm disappointed to see that a Ranger Raptor is only coming on 33s. Uh, it's going to also be OEM equipment on the 2024 Chevy Silverado HD and the GMC Sierra HD in a 275 6520, which is a 34 by 11. So it's going to be coming on some rig standard. Sounds like you can buy it in some places, even though this article said it's not out yet. So this article is six days old. So maybe, uh, Maybe they were just a little behind when they published that article for Motor Trend. So there you go. Go out there, rush to the stores now, get your tires. So you can be the going first to have that, the new awesome ones. Going off off that. So do you think they're they're going to be any better or any worse? I think the uh, the water channels will be nice, considering that's where they've underperformed. <laughs> Pop that picture up again of the two tires. Uh, let's go hunt. Just sent me a message. that says, all I can see on the new one are little boots everywhere. And it is totally interlocking boot, rubber boots. Oh. <laughs> I'll, never, rubber I'll boot. never not see that again. There we go. Uh, um, I was going to say that I feel like with them introducing this tire and making it look more streetable and more wintry, that maybe they're going to introduce a hybrid tire in between it and the KM. Maybe they're maybe they dialed it back from its aggressive all terrain so that they can slip a, a another one in the middle. I don't know. That's just a wild guess, but that was my very first thought when I saw that tread pattern. Same here, Aaron. I think they're going to introduce an RT tire like everybody's doing, right? Toyo Falcon. I mean, yeah. Yep. Everyone's yeah, everyone's seen RT tires, so I think that's why they probably made it. Because why else would you make it closer? Because everyone's going wider, more of a hybrid I style. So the only every single yeah. RT tire I see looks more all terrain than the all terrain they make, though. Like, have you noticed really? that? Uh -huh. I don't know. They just don't look. 
they just look like an all terrain with big tread blocks instead of little ones. There's still no gap between the treads, like like a mud terrain, you know. I don't know. I'm sure with all the uh, BFG fanboys out there, they're just going to sell like crazy. And they have those sweet little V chevrons on the sidewall, which looks super off-roady. All my off-road friends know that I do not like KOTs because I had bad experiences. But it's just because they you. were like they were like hydroplane heaven for me. Like they hydroplane everywhere. That I've I've heard like in the northwest in particular, um, the KO2s send, tend to hi, hydroplane a lot more than the other all train tires that are out there, which is why I think like the Falcon Wild, Wild Peaks are a more popular tire because they tend not to. Sorry for all you BFG lovers. It's just my my opinion. <laughs> Delete him now off the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was a BFG fanboy. I'm trying to branch out and try other tires. I had really good luck with the KM2s and the KM3s. Um, I also bought some KO2s. They wore out really fast for me, um, but it might be because of the... Um, it might be because of I bought too soft of a tire. Like I think I might have ended up with a load range C instead of a load range E. So I had the same experience here, and I had a load range E on my third gen four runner, and it wore out faster than other tires. It's probably just a softer compound. That's probably why. Um, mm. Yeah. All right, let's kick off this main topic. All right, let's do it. All right, Nye. Uh, let's. Uh, we're gonna burn through the fast five facts real quick. You just spit out the first answer that comes to your head. New or old vehicle? Old vehicle depends on how old I guess you're talking about. <laughs> uh, all the cool mid '90s stuff that doesn't feel old to you is actually old. Just so we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I. Uh, yeah, I mean. I like both, so I guess if I had to choose one, I would choose uh, two thousand type vehicles, like two thousand tens. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think that's new. I'll, I'll I think that's, that's, that's considered that's, new. That's I guess. New, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like that's new, but that's fourteen years ago. I know it's terrible. <laughs> and honestly, the reason why is is just my experience. Like when I had my third gen Forerunner, like just some of the '90s vehicles, the sunroof would leak. Like I couldn't find a part because it's like obsolete right it's like discontinued so i'd have to go to the junkyard or ebay or wherever else right co part to find a part that's, and i just that's the charm it's like that girlfriend with a little bit of mental health <laughs> issues like you know it's not that good but i remember when i had my third gen i had the roof taped up for like four months during the rainy season because i just couldn't find the part and i was like this is one reason why i hate older cars but i, I totally get the charm part i guess too so all right, summer or winter camping? Uh, I'm I'm more of a summer camper. As much as I don't mind putting 90 miles in boots on the ground while I'm hunting all winter, getting rain, slow, sneed on. If I'm if I'm camping, I I would prefer the summer for sure. Fair enough. Rock, sand, snow, or mud? I would say snow and sand. Um, I just love the be ability to just air down really low feel like you're going fast and you're not going fast and it just it, it just screams like to me that's like big on me so i mean i've 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 done some rocks though i haven't done some crazy stuff but i do notice when i do do rocks um every single time i, I do get chunks out of my tires so it's just part of the game i, I would guess so all right uh favorite vehicle brand uh toyota lexus toyota favorite tire I'm going to go with the Mickey Thompson's and that's why I bought it for my recent set. Um, I'm a... First on the show. That is a first on the show. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm definitely not a BFG KO. I haven't tried to KM, so I can't hate on BFG for like the mud terrain, but I've had, I have, I've had Toyo mud terrains. I've had Falcon mud terrains. I've had, um, I mean, I have the, the Mickey Thompson's Baja Boss Montrain right now. Uh, I have some buddies. I've had Kendas. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just a big fan of the Mickey Thompson's. I just, 
I, I like how aggressive the side biters look, the three ply sidewall. Um, and they come into low D D range to me, like that's perfect because C range is a little bit too light um, for my vehicle. E range is a little bit too much. I feel like the D range is perfect. So I mean, it just it Love meets all D. of my my needs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. I didn't know they made a D range. I've only ever seen C's and E's. So um, I usually go with the E range because I am an overloader, uh, overlander. So uh, I bring a lot of stuff camping. Ba uh, Badland Industry says that his Baja bosses did awesome at Sand Hollow last weekend or last nice. week. 10 PSI all weekend, sand, rocks, and highway. So there we go. Yeah, I haven't tried their MT, but I, I had their Baja Boss um, all terrain, which is their hybrid, and it it just did really well for me. So I actually have a lot of friends that are running it now too because I ran it first. They make that one in a thirty-five narrow as well. Oh, they do. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maybe. I think it's like a two fifty-five eighty-five seventeen or something like that. I don't remember what the metric nomenclature is on it but it's yeah. essentially skinny yeah skinny 35 <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right one more koi one more on the oh, fast five still on me wait what oh sorry <laughs> any recommendations for someone new to off-roading my recommendation is you can never be i mean just preparation right be extra prepared. Uh, if I had to give one recommendation, it'd be when you're off road, uh, try to have a buddy. If you don't have a buddy, have a way to communicate via satellite. So get a Garmin inReach or some of those other devices where you can pay a subscription. You don't have to pay it all year if you don't use it all year, but I personally have one using my vehicle around September till like around May or June. Uh, Cause you just never know when you're going to need it. So I was talking to one of my, um, one of my influencers, he was saying they had a rig of like, I think five, 10 cars. I'm not going to call his name out and give him a hard time, but uh, none of them had a way to communicate via satellite. So I think he said in the snow, it was supposed to be a day trip and they didn't get home till early in the morning because um, they had to walk like five miles or whatever down the trail. Um, mm. So that just, you know, just an extra reminder, like, yeah, definitely you want to have like a Garmin inReach or some way to communicate via satellite text message. And also just for emergencies, right? You roll your car, you guys can't. Oh, you said service. this guy had five vehicles with him? I think they had a group of like five vehicles. And, Bro, uh, I would not make fun of him for the satellite. I would make fun of him for all five vehicles not being able to drive <laughs> out. <laughs> I mean, they all got stuck in the ice they're telling me so i i totally understand right it doesn't happen, matter right? doesn't matter <laughs> i'm gonna rail on five vehicles all stuck so I, i'm um, curious like did any of them have ham ham licenses can they uh i know like our buddy aaron kravik he's got um he can email through uh his through his ham with i mean he's got some extra stuff he said he, influencers not nerds Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Influencers. I mean, it, you know, they do quite a bit of wheeling, too. So it's not like they're totally new, but it's just one of those things like, you know, I'm not there, but I can say like, at least if they had some way of communication or they were all stuck, they can at least contact someone to go help them. Right. And yeah, can get help. So. But would you, though, if all five of you and your buddies got stuck, <laughs> would you message someone and it'd be like, hey, we're all got stuck. Like, it'd be tough for me to admit that. That or they could be like, hey, I'm not going. If you're all stuck, I'm going to get stuck, right? So, yeah. who knows? <clears throat> but, yeah, I think just overall preparation, right? Have an extra spare tie rod. Have a spare CV axle. Make sure your batteries are charged. Uh, have a way to, you know, air up your tires. There's just a lot of things you can prepare for. Um, first aid kit, right? I, I just feel like, for me, I'm the over-preparer. So, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a prepper, but I'm kind of a hybrid prepper. So, I've got, you know... I've got things and I've got tools and I've got all these other things that I just either that or my pack rat. I just pack everything, you know? So. <laughs> yeah. I'm very guilty of that. <laughs> I'd rather have it than not have it and regret it later on, I guess. So, yep. So uh, let's talk about you some more. Um, how did you get started in off-roading? Yeah. So as you can tell, I've always been an outdoorsman. So hunting, fishing, 
um, when I was younger, like I talked to Koi about, I was like, I was just really into imports, right? I mean, Civics, Integras, TSX, you know, Lexus sedans, those type of things. But I had no way of going outside myself. So I'd have to always go with my family, my friends or my uncle. And I'm like, you know what? I need to get into, I need to get an off-road vehicle. So um, first rig that I bought was a 98 third gen Toyota 4Runner. It was a limited with the e-locker. Uh, I think I had that for like six months, got totaled and it got, had like all the suspension parts and parts for it. I was like, you know, I'm going to buy another one. So I bought a 99. It had the factory e-locker on that as well. Um, and just started using that to go outside, go outdoors, um, got bored of that. And like I told you guys earlier, like I, I change vehicles and tires and stuff like that all the time because I get bored. Um, and then I got a fourth gen four hundred similar to Ben and then, um, started fully I building that. So. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no questioning that Koi. Come on. Well, I was a safe. I, like I said, I bet. <clears throat> And then Phil and I and a whole bunch of guys just got together, built like a fourth gen forerunner group. And I think Nick was making comments earlier about like tunes on rentals, like he's part of the group. Um, and we all just kind of went wheeling, right? Went outside, enjoyed each other's company. Um, we went at various places, sand, mud, snow. I mean, that's kind of how I got into it. Nice. What was the very first vehicle you took off road? It was that uh, 98 forerunner, third gen okay. forerunner what is your favorite rig to hit the trail in i only have one rig right now um, but i would say the fourth gen foreigner that i had um was my favorite rig i mean i, I had geared i had it re-geared i had an arb air locker lifted it was it was pretty much you know pretty dang modified i would say outside of a handful of items um but you know like i said earlier i always get bored so i sold that in the height of the pandemic when prices were crazy um had someone from los angeles fly down gave me a cashier's wow. check and i shipped it out a few days later it was the easiest car sale in my life so um so i just wanted to start with something fresh i know i needed a truck so i, I bought a new third gen tacoma all these parts for it didn't like it and sold that as well so now i have a lexus gx but... you'll probably be happy with that one for a while yeah, I feel like it's got certain creature comforts, but also not like too advanced in tech. So, so we all have them. Uh, what's your most embarrassing moment on the trail? He got stuck would... with four other guys without <laughs> having a satellite communicator. <laughs> he didn't tell anybody that he was on that trip. Well, I think the last time I actually went wheeling um, was with the group of those fourth gen guys, and um, we were going up Silver Star up Washougal, and there was there was some decent snow. Uh, I was only air down to about I think around ten psi, but I was going up, hit this a little bit of an embankment, and I debeated two tires, so two wheels, and I was like, man, like not one but two, and kind of slid down a little bit. So that was probably, I would say, my most embarrassing moment. But it was fun, learning experience, over-preparedness. So I had the lighter fluid. I had Kobe valves. I had all the extra stuff in case something broke. Um, high lift jack. And we were able to get out of there. I think we got it all done in an hour or so, uh, thanks yeah. to a lot of my buddies there. And I told myself, if I'm going to do that again, I am not uh, debating tires anymore. So I got B-locks now because I don't want to do that again. That's wild that you debated him at 10 PSI. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wasn't going the, super fast, so I was like, I don't, yeah, it's weird. What kind of wheels were you running? Uh, I was running SCS. Um, I think they're F5 wheels, or they're Gen 5s, one of those. But this is prior to SCS having, like, now SCS, I think they put neurals on the actual um, beat area. This is, like, their first generation wheel where they didn't have any of that technology, so whiskey throw i i debated two tires not too far from where you're talking about um i was at the south end of gifford pincho and i was in the snow but i put both of those tires into like a, a v notch where like a water had flowed down the trail and i had two tires in there driving sideways and it just kind of pinched the beads on both of them but i was oh. at uh like four psi okay so That's the only time I've ever debated. I've gotten pretty lucky otherwise, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 
So hopefully that won't happen again. But yeah. Well, do you have a biggest win on the trail? I wouldn't say I've been through some really like crazy trails, so I, I wouldn't say I have a biggest win. Um, but hopefully in the future I'll get to go to Moab sooner than later and go to some of those fun trails and and maybe I can have a bigger conversation then. Just telling you, just uh, let your family know that you're going out for milk on like September 8th <laughs> and uh, show back up like the 15th. <clears throat> that's, that's when you're going, right, Coy? Yeah. I'm going for milk, yeah. <laughs> All right. uh, he hasn't well. checked with his wife yet, but <laughs> yeah. he's pretty sure he's going to need milk on that day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Where is your favorite place to wheel? Uh, I, I think Browns Camp's pretty fun. Going through Happy Meal and just Fire Break and those trails. I mean, it's all pretty fun. I mean, I've been there probably like, I don't know, five, six times now. And I just never had a bad time going. It's all been fun. So uh, I did. Um, last time I was going through those Browns Camp area, I went through these trees. And I did forget. I guess this was kind of embarrassing, but not. Uh I had cracked one of my side mirrors because I thought that folding me in was going to be good enough and it wasn't. So uh -oh. apparently the fourth gen four runner was a little too thick. I broke a mirror out of Brown's camp also. <laughs> hey, we broke a mirror at Brown's camp together. We've already DVD'd two tires around the same area. <laughs> I know. Man. It's like not a lot in common, man. Yeah. Why don't do? you guys get yeah, married already? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. I thought it was Tahuya where you broke your mirror. Um on the L and TV, right? No, I think it was Brown's Camp. Have you rear ended a Jeep at Brown's Camp before? Yes. Oh, you're talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I, aware have you <laughs> <laughs> I have not, but I mean that would have been three strikes and yeah, I don't know, I've been kind of crazy, but no, I've not. Yeah. So, uh, is there any places you want to go that you haven't gone to? Obviously, Moab's on that list, right? Yeah, I definitely want to go to Moab. Um, I definitely want to go to the, some of the trails in California. Um, and I mean, it's not really a trail, but I, I haven't been to the Alvaro Desert either, right? I mean, like, I just got to explore more. So, I blame it yeah. on my kids. Like, that's my excuse. So, so. You just drag them with you. Yeah, I take them with you. Especially the I Alvard. I blame, I, I mean, I take my kids with me, but then I blame the trip being ruined on them. So it's, yeah, yeah it's like one or the other. So, so when you take them to the Alvord, just say, we're going to go get milkshakes. <laughs> because Good there's idea, a milk man. place shop. What it, where is that? Uh, just there before the Alvord. It's, Field Station. Yeah, there are some Field, amazing yeah. milkshakes yeah, there. So, so you're going for milkshakes and, oh no, we ended up in the desert. You know. I, I definitely want to go to the Rubicon. That's that's one that's on my list too, for sure. So. The list pretty much ends. where everybody wants to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, well, you can start tag along with us. We're gonna do some more exploring. Um, like Koi says, we're going to Moab in September. Um, I'm definitely gonna try to get out this summer to some other places before going to Moab. But uh, yeah, we'll hit you up. All right, sounds good. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, let's uh, let's jump into Spartan Rope since we're only an hour into the podcast. <laughs> you know, just a quick, <laughs> quick intro there. Um, tell us how you got started uh, owning it, running it. What what's it all about? Yeah, so I um, so I actually have a buddy that's 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 local to me. Um, I think I've told this story more than once already. So some of you listeners probably already know this, but uh essentially i was at fred myers a local fred myers um i was flipping through instagram and i saw that uh my rig was on there and we had some some guy was like hey we've got the same wheels and it was stealth custom series that reposted it and then ended up being friends with uh bobby um because we were a mile down the road and he's helping with my rig and just got to know each other and we were pretty cool and then he eventually told me that um that him and a friend of his ran a uh, Spartan rope. And I was like, well, okay, like when, when can I get a rope? Cause I didn't have a kinetic rope at the time. So I'm pestering him like once every couple of months. And I think it got down to after almost a year, I, I called him. I was like, Hey, like when are you get in stock of those ropes? Cause I need a kinetic rope. 
And uh, he was like, and, and I've been telling him that I've always wanted to do something, right? Like have another side hustle or get in the off-road industry or just part for something in the automotive world. Um, and his first thing out of his mouth was like, do you want to buy it? And I was like, okay, well, let's talk. And I think we just kept communicating, kept talking. And um, him and his other friend, Zach, which Koi, your buddy is with, um, we eventually just got together and we kind of talked about like what that would look like. Uh, so I think during COVID, right, it was just more of like, just difficult to grow and things like that. And I've always wanted to do something else, try something else. So it was a perfect opportunity for me to get into it and not have to invest tons of money. Um, and that's kind of how it all got started. I've taken it over. Uh, I think we're on year three now. Um, I've been listening to like my users, right? R and D just developing and just making everything that I have better. So I no longer offer the gen one ropes that were, that were made before. Um, I had manufacturers and I was testing quite a few different ones. So the ropes that we have now are better. I mean, they have dipped eyes, they have the sleeves around the eyes as well. Um, I've got a gen three coming up and then just talking to like some of the customers, they're like, Hey, like, it'd be great if you offered a USA made option. And I was like, well, I don't mind offering a USA made option, but it has to be better, right? So what's gonna be different? Um, so I was doing research, um, looking for a manufacturer and uh, found one and started offering USA made products too. So like one of the differences is it's got a external polymeric type coating versus like a, like a, like a dyed nylon type coating. So that's one difference. Um, USA made, right, in the ISO facility, it's got USA made fibers, right, new some nylon. So so just overall listening, right? And then as I'm as I've been expanding, I've noticed just from my own use cases, what do I need, right? Because I've had some other brand um, hitch receivers that were made for D rings, and I was like, man, it's it's not really made for my soft shackles, right? It, the hole's small, it cuts into my soft shackle, it's not beveled. So I think year two, I was like, hey, like I need to make a soft shackle specific recovery hitch, and that's why I ended up making these. Um, so they've got beveled edges. Um, there are larger holes, so you can fit a soft shackle. And they have a minimum brake strength of like 60,000 pounds, so just crazy strong. And so, so that took about a year, right? It took time. <laughs> so, Did you say when you were testing those, you broke some? Yeah, I broke different sizes. So um, so this is a one and a half inch diameter. I have I have one inch. I mean, I've I've tested some this size, which is even like a smaller hole. Um, so I was trying to find the right balance between like easy, e ease of use and also something strong enough. Um, these are going to be stronger than the recovery hitch loads themselves anyways. Um, but it, it just took time, right? Manufacturing, anodizing, um, everything that I actually uh, offer for sale, uh, I actually get them tested at a local uh, USA facility. So there's a local rigging facility that I actually test the brake strengths at and I actually get them certified. and whether our products are made overseas or here in the US, uh, they're actually tested and certified in the USA. So I hold the same standards. Um, I don't just take my manufacturers overseas that provide me with the ropes and take their testing standards in consideration. I do have them send me a report, but I, and I, I, I always tell them, right? I mean, I, I do batch testing too. So usually when I do get a new batch, I will actually test that one as well. Cause I want to make sure that I'm offering the same quality and I'm, 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 hold, I'm held to standards. That I'd, I'd want to buy something too, right? So I think I've, like, I've joined other podcasts. So, hey, you know, if it's something that I don't want to buy, I don't want to sell it, right? So I, I do hold myself true to that. I got to say so, that uh, that receiver hitch that you sell, uh, shameless plug, I, I bought one before I even knew who the new owner of Spartan Ropes was. And I absolutely love it. It is amazing. It's, it's so much better <laughs> For running soft shackles that i've almost primarily run soft shackles now uh yeah so i wanted to Go bring up so spartan rope sponsored me in the past and i'm going to need you to continue what? on with that so, <laughs> uh and just i have a photo as proof as you can see this is uh <laughs> there you the go previous owners of spartan rope with me you can see we just did a comp together and uh, they paid my entry fees, so I'm gonna need you to pay all competition entry fees from now on. Way it's, to it's way to spring it on him live. That's <laughs> a that's a good way to do it because then you can't yeah. say no in front of everyone. Yeah, in front it'd of the be, world. make him look horrible to say no. <laughs> just cut me out. In front of yeah, our million, like, 
<laughs> what people don't know are, are my stipulations for that sponsorship. So that's a whole different story. Oh, <laughs> yes. Gonna, I want to know where he has to put the tattoo. Uh, I'm going to have to compete full time or something. Uh, Rick, Rick in the comments is asking if you can put uh, hard D ring shackles in your uh, receiver. So, um, I haven't tested it that way. Uh, I can tell you that it is strong because when I did test it and how it broke, um, it was on steel cables uh, because I couldn't get a a metal piece small enough to fit into that hitch pin. Um, so it was on steel cables and over 60,000 pounds. It actually didn't break. It just bent a little bit. But but I didn't want to you know take the extra time to actually break other ones because I think it, in the end, it's meeting the minimum requirements that I'm offering. Uh, oh, yeah. So... So, I mean, you can, but I mean, I don't recommend it because it's, that's not what it's designed for. Um, so, I mean, and, and, and why, right? I feel like almost why, like, cause yeah, Rick, get with the yeah. times. <laughs> cause the soft shackle is just much safer. Right. And yeah. No. So. Yeah. And Rick, you're getting old. You don't need to carry around those heavy D rings. You just need some of them lightweight <laughs> soft shackles. And I mean, so many other people offer D ring soft shackle receivers, uh, D ring receivers. Right. So it's like. Here, here's how much here. I liked that uh, Spartan Rope soft shackle receiver. I bought it immediately, went on a snow wheeling trip, and somebody else on the trip was like, I need one of those. And I said, here you go. And I pulled out my old Factor 55 one for deer rings, and I was like, this is yours now. I immediately gave away my old one within 48 hours of owning that. All right, man. Uh, what all products do you sell? Yes, yeah, so I've got this recovery hitch. Uh, I've got a kinetic rope. So the red ropes you see here are made overseas. The yellow rope is made in the USA. Um, I've got uh, USA made soft shackles as well um, as the soft shackles. Those are, a, those are long too. Yep, they are longer and they're skinnier and it's a different type of design. So uh, if you open this up, it's more of a double loop design um and it's got a higher brake rate so this is a uh this is a 3 8 inch and this is a 7 16 but it's just a different design and different fiber you can see so uh, I, they both I, can't, I can't really but, see just because of the video quality here but one thing i've noticed uh, about soft shackles there's some where the ball on the end is like super tight and and is almost spherical and some feel more like a knot uh what is the difference there? Like, I, I I don't see any difference in brake strength. Is it a different kind of knot? But it's just like super obvious when you hold two of them. Yeah, it's it's, it's just the way that they're manufactured. Um, but I, but I do think like like this is the USA made one's a double loop design. Um, the ones made over suit isn't really a double loop design. I can offer them that way. I'm actually doing some other research to offer other ones because I want to improve the products. Um, some people offer soft shackles with the sleeve. Some people offer them with the woven sleeve uh, externally, right? So um, I'm actually looking at a few different designs. But yeah, as you can see, right, two different knots here, different size. Different uh, Badlands, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So hang tight. I think you'll like that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually working on some new stuff as well. So uh, I know, you know, with all the recent news of kind of, the off-road industry, like people are talking about bridles and different things. Um, I also offer a, a toe strap that I just came out with. So one of the diff differences with this is uh, this toe strap is 20 is 20 foot long, but it's got an 18 foot removable sleeve. So um, usually when you're towing a vehicle off the mountain or you're like, you know, it's always dragging on the ground, right? When it drags on the ground, there's abrasion. Uh, it compromises the, the strength of the rope and the toe strap. So uh, I was like, hey, you know, because everyone can go to Harbor Freight or somewhere else to get one, but how can I make this a little bit better, right? So I broke this. I, I broke a few of them. They broke a 32K pound um, minimum braking strength, and they've got, you know, just overall good quality. This one's made overseas, but uh, it's got an 18-foot sleeve, right? So that's a little different, and it's not going to break mm -hmm. the bank either. So uh, some of the new stuff I'm working on are is definitely more towards like um, cause I've noticed when I've taken, like I went with my family to like the beach and just certain areas. Um, what do you do when, you know, it's a van or something else that you don't have a recovery point. Right. I mean, uh, I'd be very careful about what I'm using it at, but I had to recover um, my cousin's van that was stuck at the beach. 
and I actually daisy chained a few soft shackles to, to get him out um, because he didn't have a recovery point, right? So I was like, hey, I need to create like a, or for folks who don't have recovery hitches and they have a two bumper or something, what can you use? So I was like, you know what? I need to create something else. So right now I'm actually working on the design of a oversized shackle, o a oversized soft shackle. It's going to be like 40 inches long, going to be crazy strong, and it'll be multi-use um, as well. So I need you to invent like a soft shackle with the frame keys for, to, you know, giving a, a tug to like supers and stuff where you have to reach <laughs> in and key it into the frame. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, I've, I've had people ask me, right, like, what's next, Nye? Like, are you doing winching? Like, I, I, I don't know. You know, like, there's so many things. Like, at the end of the day, I'm a small operation. Everything that I do sell, I do test and I certify in the U.S. I actually use it myself, right? So it's like, you know, I'm not I'm not having a venture capitalist give me, like, a, a million dollars to do whatever I want, right? That'll be a different story. So, um, so I've been growing organically. I've been reinvesting all all the investments that I've made, I've reinvested into new products and just listening to my customers. So I'm always open ears. Um, I've, I've talked to people about, you know, when, when, when extensions, and there's just so many different things that you can offer. But um, for me, it's like, there's so many products out there. What can I offer that's a little bit different or a little bit better? So um, if you ended up offering yeah. one of those synthetic winch lines that has a soft shackle built into the end of it, I will buy one because they look so cool absolutely no good reason for me to own one other than i love the way they look uh, we'll talk, boy. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the uh, u.s uh tested and certified uh can you go some more detail into that yeah so there's a local rigging facility that i go to um they also make things for other big name companies uh which i'm not going to name um, but what I'll typically do when I offer a new product like this toe strap that I, that I just came out with, um, I'll get a few made. I'll at least break a couple of them. Um, my minimum break strengths are going to be under the break rating that I break them at. Um, I usually create videos. I haven't posted those videos yet. Um, and they have a certification process where once you break it, they, they print out a slip, right? Because there's going to, there's a, the, the facility has cages um, it is hooked onto like we're talking about ropes. It's hooked onto two different, two different eyes. It stretches the cage blocks the actual rope and nylon from flying everywhere. And then there's a little graph on the top and there's a graph on the computer that tells you uh, what it breaks at. You can hear it. Uh, I, I usually use a gimbal. I'll, I'll put the gimbal on the actual next to the rope that's breaking because I don't want to stand right there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it has to get scheduled. Um, I schedule it. Uh, I've, I've tested, uh, competitors products. I test my own products. Uh, and I do that. I try to do it once a quarter or once every six months, depending on kind of like the orders I have coming in. Um, but that's how it works. I don't know if you had any specifics, Ben, or any other particular questions, but can you just like prop up a, a truck hood, a SUV hood and stand behind that? to be safe in case it breaks <laughs> that's what they say right you pop your hood so if your winch line breaks it protects you uh just stand behind like a bronco windshield oh speaking of that coy speaking of that uh we heard through the grapevine that uh maybe one of your product was involved in a recent incident where a soft shackle broke and a kinetic rope smashed against someone's windshield and it was a whole online fiasco you want to shed some light on that yeah i mean i don't know if it's a secret and honestly i i didn't go out there and make my way out there to kind of say hey these were my products right i mean that's not what i'm all about uh, at the end of the day like i want to respect the privacy of everybody but yeah so uh in that particular incident uh that's actually a spartan kinetic rope um that was used uh, on the end that where the soft shackle did not break, uh, that was our USA made soft shackle. On the other end was the Amazon soft shackle. So um, I think uh, from, you know, from the owner of the Bronco, what he was mentioning was that uh, the Amazon soft shackle had a few different ratings from um, different websites or even their own, their own Amazon link. Um, and, and I think, you know, I, like I said, I don't want to talk back about any company. That's not what I'm in the business for. 
but I think um, that's one of the differentiators with us is, I mean, we do test and certify our products uh, because we don't want things like that happening. At the end of the day, right? Yours was stronger than the Amazon one. I think that's that's a fair statement at this point. Yes, and um, mine is actually a smaller size than the Amazon one. I think the Amazon was a half inch and mine's a three eighth inch. So ideally, right, uh, the Amazon one should have been stronger since it was bigger. Um, And also, the rope that 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 I was I went through the windshield, I believe, is actually uh, it's it's rated at thirty three thousand pounds. So I think. Because I actually reached out to my manufacturers, right, and some of the engineers that worked. I was like, hey, like, just kind of wanted to gather their thoughts because I'm not an industry expert, right? I mean, I will be the first one to admit that, but but they are, right? They're the ones that manufacture, they produce, they deal with this stuff all the time. And um, what he thinks is just, you know, it was just a failure in the in the cheaper soft shackle that broke, and it actually broke under the rating because um, ideally, I mean, the ropes rated at 33,000 pounds, but the rope didn't rake. Uh, I felt super bad for the uh, for the for the customer that happened to. Um, I had you know I wanted to do testing on the on the rope that went through the windshield, so I actually sent him a new rope, and I took the old one back, and I, I plan on testing it. It's kind of curious, right? I mean, if it had a, that much force, um, how long did it stretch to? Uh, what what's it gonna break at? And just overall, like you know, when it when there's impact on the windshield, I wonder if that impacted kind of the eye as well and the strength. So, you know, I, I'm just kind of curious. So at the end of the day, um, I'm happy that uh, the youth, you know, the customer is okay. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I mean, know if you have additional questions, but. I, I think that's when, I think that's a when, great uh, opportunity to test that rope. I'm glad that you got for sure. I mean, it's, it's it sucks for the guy who got life flighted because glass cut him. But uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to see what you what happens with where the brake strength is at because I'm willing to bet it's basically uh, new, <laughs> like because I'm sure it was all in that that soft shell. Yeah. yeah, I'm honestly not sure because I do know that. Uh, he did have a gen one rope, which I know like the gen one rope wasn't as consistent quality, um, you know, just being fully transparent, but he also used it, I believe he said 40 times or so. So uh, yeah, I, I am really curious, right? So I am going to break it um, probably the next couple of months uh, as I'm testing out new products as well. Um, before I offer those oversized soft shackles and some of the other products I'm working on, I'm going to break them, right? So it's going to be a perfect opportunity to break that rope as well. Badlands says, didn't we confirm a shear point on the pulling vehicle? I don't know if it was confirmed. It sounded like they had a soft shackle stuck through the D-ring eyelet. So it's too sharp of a bend and possibly sharp edges, but it's kind of could could possibly be yes, possibly no, I suppose. Yeah, I, I mean, I think in this scenario, right, it's in the day, it's an unfortunate incident. I mean no one's gonna 110 percent know what's going on right i mean there's so many things involved i mean i think like even like the the recovery points were bent there's just some so many things involved in that right i i think the the one thing that i got questions were was just like size uh i know that i i offer only a one inch kinetic rope right now um i've been testing seven eighth inch for the last four or five months now which i haven't came out to offer yet actually this is the first time i'm talking about it in this in this in this podcast right now um, but in the end, I think the rope still stretched, right? It wasn't like it didn't stretch at all. Um, it's a little bit big for his vehicle, yes. Um, could have used a smaller one. I don't know if offering a smaller rope in that instance, I don't think it would have made a difference in terms of it actually breaking. I think the incident still probably would have happened. At the end of the day, I mean, I think the Jeep was just going too fast, right? It's just too much sheer force, so. I, I know there were some people talking about the rope size, and I mean, maybe this is me telling on myself, but. Kinetic ropes weren't like readily available for everyday man prices not that long ago. And we all we all just use toe straps that have absolutely zero give. And 100 percent polyester static, right? Yeah. yeah. And like we, like it sucked. You you'd brace yourself, everybody get ready for the slab. We all pulled each other out with those for the last 40 years until 2012 when suddenly stretchy ropes. Uh, became a thing or kinetic ropes became a thing well, so i don't i don't if it's a little bit big it's just it's a little bit stronger it's the ratings for the pulling vehicle not the stuck vehicle the way i understand it so 
Yeah, and I think that, and I mean, like, what if you're the one that's stuck and you have a one inch, you know, you have a smaller size rope um, that's rated for your vehicle, but the guy that wants to pull you is, you know, is a one ton pickup or something, right? I think yeah, he's going to use the giant rope because you got to use the yeah. rope that's rated for the heaviest vehicle. The assist vehicle, you know, yeah. Use, yes. So. Hmm. So, I mean, um, at the end of the day, you're not going to probably carry two kinetic ropes either, right? Like, you're not going to have a seven eighths, a smaller one, and, and a one inch. Like, so it's, yeah, I mean. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't fault the size of the rope in that at all. Obviously, perfect fit would be better, but I mean, I, I, I have I can't even remember what size my rope is, but I don't go. Oh, you have a Suzuki Samurai. Sorry, bro, I can't use my kinetic rope to pull you out. It's too big. Like no, I just hit them at ninety miles an hour and. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. Uh, Koi, you left out that uh, ARB had the snatch straps that were the flat ones that had some stretch, not much. Yeah, and I know they existed, like but I didn't. Years. I didn't know anybody who had those. Like oh, before 2010, 2014 in there, like everyone just used the flat toe strap. I'm sure there yeah. were some cool overlandy people, but if regular wheelers 10, 12 years ago, you, you nope. everyone used toe straps or you didn't have a purple stick strap there? No. no, I've only I've only had a Bubba. I've I've not oh. had an ARB stretchy strap. Yeah, but the problem with the ARB ones is they only had like 10 uses and then they're they're kind of gone. Yeah, and I think oh. those snatch straps only stretch up to like I think I don't know I don't pull whatever I think it's probably yeah yeah like yeah ten or eleven percent so it's really not that much of a difference I feel like yeah um, not the thirty percent that you get from uh, a kinetic rope up to thirty percent yeah so do your ropes come with tags that give brake strength and other other uh, ident or not uh, other details yeah so I don't know if you can see it but I do have uh, tags. On there, and, and it has a minimum brake strength. Uh, it says to not exceed, you know, a certain amount of weight. It has uh, a tag label that says it's for vehicles up to this amount of weight. Uh, batch number, so I can keep track of kind of what what, what batch it is. Um, mm. And so yeah, and then they have, you know, I'm gonna start adding some other labels to them. But I, like I know my soft shackles, right? It specifically says don't like attach it to a tow ball because that happens quite a bit. And it, not oh, nice! You guys have seen. Um, nice. But yeah, I've I've definitely added and I've refined. Like my USMA one has like some some rigging notices and some instructions. So, so yeah, I mean those are things that were not on uh, the products when when I took over, right? I mean it was just plain. Uh, didn't have any labels. Didn't have any tags. Um, I think that's what a lot of people miss is like a lot of those small things. They matter, you know. I mean, as people are using the products, um, they want to understand the ratings. And the tags are all waterproof, so it's just it's just not going to get wet, and you can't see anything. Um, Do you want to make those tags like really easily torn off? Because if they're used in any kind of commercial application, as soon as that rating tag is off, the entire strap is bad. <laughs> I have so many tree straps. Not saying that they get ripped off at work and I dig them home, but if I did, I would have a plethora of them. Yeah, you can't use them in a commercial setting if it doesn't have the information on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's gotta, so don't make those too robust. <laughs> make sure they come off pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, and I think like it's it's interesting, right? When you look at ratings and things like that from like the rigging industry, I think like 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 I mentioned, I'm not no expert, but overhead rigging is like five to one ratio, right? Yeah. Um, there's there's your winch ratio. I think it's like one and three quarters or something. There's different ratios for different things. I don't know if there's an official here in the U.S. This is an official off-road rating, right, for certain applications because everybody uses the applications differently. So I think in the end, you want it to be stronger than not as strong, right? I mean, so yeah, um, yeah. So I think so. I think that's kind of on the safe side, but also, yeah, I mean, just not not going super fast at it on, on the recovery. So um, so there's so many things that go into it. Um, by no means, like I said, I'm an industry expert. I am working on learning more about those type of things and ratings and rigging and all that. But it's like it's hard, right? It's like um, like like my soft shackle recovery hitches. Those things have a minimum brake strength of sixty thousand pounds, but your your actual towing hitch is gonna fail before my product does, right? So, yeah. 
So I, it's I like guarantee you, my bumper doesn't have. <laughs> my my frame on my truck will probably fail <laughs> if the hitch so, doesn't. The frame will. My yeah, frame and will definitely <laughs> fail. Like it just like rip rust out. I want so, everybody to know that as soon as we saw the Bronco video, we tracked down the guy that had the rope, and that's why we brought this interview. That's the kind of stuff we do for you. Sir, I mean, the kind of service we yeah. do. That's the kind of hard hitting news. I mean, <laughs> we, we, had totally, yeah. we had them scheduled for months. Uh, yeah. It just happened to work out this way, which made it very interesting. And I'm glad you were willing to talk about it with us. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'd, I mean, I wasn't going to publicly market that hey you know what the soft shock of the didn't brick was mine like at the end of the day it, it was a bad situation that happened um glad the customer is okay but uh it, it definitely is a learning opportunity for the whole off-road community right i mean at the end of the day you want to get good products that are rated for it as well as you don't want to go super fast right that's why I, like i'm gonna i'm gonna start adding do not exceed five mile per hour labels on mine right at the end of the day because um i got to protect myself got to make sure that everybody's using the rope safely as well so I think in the end, yeah, it's an un unfortunate circumstance, but um, glad he's okay. And um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to testing uh, the product and the rope that uh, that had uh, hit the windshield. So it, it definitely added a new level of uh, what to think about when you're doing recoveries with kinetic ropes. Yeah, and I was actually talking to a buddy about this, right? Because everybody uses winch dampeners. The end of the day right it's it's usually like like something that goes over the winch mm -hmm. the wire or the actual synthetic rope uh, you you weight it so it does take some of the impact so um i actually was kind of curious so i had my manufacturer make one of these it's got reflective materials you can see here next time i go break these i'm really curious i'm going to take a few videos if they're actually going to help with the impact at all right i'll wait it a little bit with some sand or something kind of safe but also it's it, it's a kinetic rope so i mean it's not a steel winch line so i don't know if it's overkill but i'm kind of curious right how much impact yeah. it's going to take uh if it's actually going to make a difference and if people are interested i'll offer it right at the end of the day so i just got to test it first so yeah. i don't know if it's overkill but it's something that i'm testing i'm working on designing and we'll see what happens it's, a, it, it's an interesting idea, and I mean, if it works, that's a viral idea right there, just to open up the safety of kinetic recoveries. <laughs> Build one into the rope if you have to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I've been talking about manufacturers. Um, you know, everybody's got different opinions, right? So, but I'll try it out. I mean, you never know. All right. Uh, we could probably talk all night because you're right. an interesting guy and have cool stuff, but we all have families have to go to bed eventually. So last question, where can our listeners find you? Um, so uh, www.spartanrope.com. Um, on Instagram, it's just Spartan Rope, one word. Facebook is Spartan with a space and rope. Um, you can email me and reach me via email at uh, nai, N-A-I, at spartanrope.com or sales, uh, S-A-L-E-S, -E at spartanrope.com. So, yeah, you can reach me multiple sources, Instagram, email, Facebook. Um, I'm all ears, so I'll be happy to answer any questions you have and and help you help you get you suitable what you need. So Nice. All right, guys, speaking of hard-hitting news, next week is all off-road news, news-heavy episode. So be sure to tune in for that. Don't forget to visit Patriot Patch and join the Patch of the Month Club. Check out our Gaia affiliate link for up to 40% off. Also, don't forget to head over to Warren Colby Valve and 4Patriots to see all of their great products. We are a proud part of the Firearms Radio Network. Got a question or comment? Send it to us through our Linktree account or by searching for Off-Road Podcast. Also, you can listen to us live at overlandradio.com Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific. When off-road, please remember to have fun, tread lightly, and be safe and courteous. Thanks for listening. Hey, Nye, are you going to be at the... Uh... Off-road toy outfitters mud and trail series. Uh, I've actually just talking to Phil about that. I'm not sure yet, um, but 
we'll see. I mean, I've, I've, I've got that. I've got, you know, I'm, I'm t- in talks about like Overland Rally, Northwest Overland Rally right now, Overland Expo, um, talking to the local dealers and, you know, people who are selling my stuff uh, locally as well about what kind of events they have coming up. So I just got to plan it out. So I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't given him a yes or a no, but uh, I actually just saw Phil on Sunday as well. So 